and welcome to another episode of Let's Discuss It. This topic today is Super Slavin Village, or not so Super Slavin Village. This side depends what side the fence you two sit on, or maybe you're sitting right on the middle of it getting splinters. Um, Tom, Village, he's got 12 months left. Does he deserve a new deal right now? Um, no. Um, I think if you'd have asked that question 12 months ago when he was after the incredible season, I think you should have had new contract then bang give it to him um, obviously this season hasn't panned out for you know, I guess you could say ulterior reasons or exterior reasons that it wasn't really his fault or some of which is out of his control um, but no probably obviously you've got a base off this season um, and, and for me no so what are you expecting they were finished 7th then 11th and if that's not good enough to get a contract yeah I know I think it's I, w- I would like him to, to get a new contract um, but I just think that there's some some bits of, of him as a manager that, that still worry me at times um, and his selections and his you know when he, if he's trusted with the budget um, and, and just little little things um, here and there um, that, that still worry me about him but it's difficult I, I really am on the fence I am I'm splintering because of it and I, I think I, I'm, I'm firmly on the fence um, after, after this season Tim, he's heading into what could be his last season. He could be heading into a season where he earns a new deal. Would you give him a new deal right now? Um, no. Um, I would probably let the, the season pan out, maybe for the first half of the season, see how things are going and sort of take it from there, really. It's a difficult one because I think when he's not got a new contract on the table, it means that he's going to play certain players and act in different ways for example if he had a three year deal that he'd signed this summer I think he'd take a bigger uh, gamble on the youth I think he'd feel a lot more secure in his job to see that there's a long term plan in place which I think is really important for the club personally Um, when you've got 12 months on your contract and you want a new one you're going to play players that that you know are not going to get you relegated they're going to give you a solid stable season so there's a lot of sort of mitigating certain circumstances around the whole thing as well. It's a tough one. I like Bilic, but I do think he has some tactical fallacies there that are pretty so obvious. So do you think he's under pressure before the season he's, he's been started? The season started yeah, a couple do, of months yeah. ago. Do you think he's under pressure already? Yeah, and no, I don't think it helps that the, the, the owners, they like a, the media attention and, you know, they just got to let him get on with his job. And he did, have, like Tom said, he did have a lot of um, other things going on last season with the stadium move, the Pyatt situation, the, the horrific injury list, long-term injury list, which disrupted everything. Um, so it, well, it made his job harder. But if you're just looking at best statistics, you're right, we finished 11th, we're safe. And who else is there to take his place? I can't think of any good managers right now I think would do a better job than him. Be so, so why would you not give him a new deal then? Um, because if you look at the quality of what happened this season we're just taking it based on results and performances it was a car crash this season and I think but why was that a car crash apart from but do you not think part of the reason it was a car crash is because he was under pressure don't um, stop and now we're uh, I, think, I think there's a multitude of, sort of different reasons but one of which is it has got to come down to the manager um, so I would personally if I was sitting in David Sullivan's shoes I would say to him look if we get a good start to the season without these issues that are going on we're going to buy some good players you know if, we, if we're doing well in December then we'll put a three year contract get it signed and move on from there that's, that's how I would play it Are you impressed with how he handled um, everything you know he's, he's both correct there is tactically areas he's a bit naive and he's a low from his own mistakes but given everything the pie the injuries etc the constant media speculation did he handle it well in your opinion i think he's the one thing that we've come to know of slab and village is he's cool calm collected um you know he's very pensive he's he's he always you always feel like he he knows what to say he's not he's different than other managers um he he just he fills you with a sense of confidence, um, and, and I think he, he has dealt with everything in the most polite and the most you know, amicable manner in which he could have done it. You know, because he really could have thrown his toys out of the pram, but for the betterness of the squad, he was you know, tried to keep a lid on it. You know, everything. You know, he, he, I just 
he's a likable guy, and he just he, does, he he seems to do everything right in that respect. I, there's not one occasion where he's fallen out with the media or he said something out of turn that you've gone, oh, hang on a minute. You know, you, yeah. you, there's nothing but positive vibes that you get from Bilic, and I, I think with everything that's been thrown at him this season, I think he's responded tremendously. Well. I think he's a very very good man manager. I think that's his best quality. What's his worst thing? You said about his tactical side of it. Then what does that equate to? What part of it you're going to say? Well, this part. Is... I think it's just. I think it takes him too long to see deficiencies in the setup of the team, to see what players are playing well and aren't playing well, to to make changes within games as well. Um, things that we can see that people around me pull their hair out about certain things that happen in games or certain players, and he he just sticks to it. He sticks to his guns with certain things. He's very stubborn about stuff like that, I think. Um, I think he could do with having maybe some help on, a, on like a backroom staff level, personally. Um, I think fitness is a big issue as well. But apparently he's very loyal to the guys he's got in the backroom. And, you know, if they go, he goes. That's what I've heard. So I, I just think he could possibly do with some assistance, especially from the defensive side. I mean... We were awful at the start of the season. We changed it to five at the back, which shored everything up. But it meant we were awful going forward. And then he went back to four at the back, and we, you know, and we seemed to have kind of got over that bump in the road in the yeah. season. And then we went back to five, started conceding a lot of goals again. Went back to five and shored it up again. And it's, you know, it doesn't really seem to know what's best for the team. To be fair, I, I just think loyalty works two ways. I think he's done his job spec for two seasons now. His first season, I thought best season I've ever experienced as a West Ham fan to date yeah. all my life that season was horrendous but we still finished 11th and the manager can go through all that and get you 11th I think you've got a good thing there and like you said the only thing you two can point out that is poor about him is some of the, some d- tactical decisions he makes mm. but I would flip that around and say well he's done a, what a lot of us wanted to see and it's not worked Co- we were all saying why is Kaleri not getting a goal for him yeah. Kaleri Kaleri doesn't score we're all saying well I, then we all yeah. wanted Byron right back. He plays Byron right back, and then when the going got tough at Sunderland, he went and got himself sent off for yeah. being stupid. Mm. And that's where really it really spoiled. But I would give him a new deal yeah. because I want to see youth. But can we expect youth next season when there's a manager fighting for his job? No, no. And unfortunately, that is, I guess, the price that we're going to have to pay. Um, and it's it's a shame, but yeah, it's kind of you know where do we stand because we're crying out for spending lots of money on big players to, to change the team and we have a lot of young capable people especially the likes of Cullen on loan at Bradford who I think is probably from what we've, we've seen of him is one of the best academy youth products to come through in since probably the Lampard days um, and he just won't get that looking under Slavin and I don't know if it's just he doesn't trust them or, you know obviously we saw with Byram he had a reluctance to play him last year because I think that trust issue that he had maybe with you know having the younger players there it's why he maybe went out and bought Byron or kept playing Antonio there is because he, he didn't want to give that responsibility to a, to a youth player and I think it is such a shame because a lot of these youth players and what we've heard in, 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 you know, in the pipeline is that a lot of them might have to go either out on loan again or move elsewhere in the summer um, and it is such a great shame and obviously necessarily uh, you know, we know what our owners are like and he could save his job next season or he could be out the door we, we just don't know but I like you said, if, if it comes down to him saving his job, no way does the youth get a chance with him. I think. I think a lot of it comes down to expectation. So we had a great season, not last season, the season before. And then we moved stadiums and it was all about moving to the next level. I would love nothing more than for the owners to come out and say, we are working to a 10-year plan. We don't have the money that Chelsea have got, Man United have got, etc., etc. We're not going to be able to go out and buy players. And even if we do spend 150 million this season, the other teams will go and spend 300 million. Yeah, so we're never going to chase them. Yeah, we're never ever going to reach them. So I would love nothing more than for the for the owners to come out and say we've got a 10-year plan. The way that we achieve the goals we want to achieve with the club and get to the next level is invest in our youth, invest in our scouting network, invest in the manager back him up with a three year deal or whatever so, so but then, give him time So you, you, but you just said you wouldn't give Bill a new deal yes because there's nothing coming from the board to say we're going to spend 150 million this is how we're going to do it there's no, there's no plan there if, if, I, if, I was, if I got given a plan by the, by the owners and they said this is what we're going to do and this is why we're going to give Bill a deal and we're going to invest in youth and it's not going to happen overnight I would quite happily say give him a deal well let's turn it around I on think that you've got to look at it as a big if, picture if the job 
for next season if the aim was stay in the Premier League finish 14th or whatever just stay away from the relegation battle the whole season yeah. Yeah. wherever you finish you finish but let's integrate this youth player let's get four or five players debuts get them some minutes here and there let's see Burke etc would you then give Bilic yes. a new deal yes I would would yeah. you um, I'd still be on the fence um, because I think I don't know I just I feel like some of those youth players could make an impact straight away and I just think that 14th I feel like we would have underperformed again yeah but I think it's about managing expectations oh, yeah. so if they say we, we know we're going to finish 14th and we're not actually going to get into the top 6 for another 5 years but this is how we're going to do it because this is a sustainable way look at what Southampton have done yeah. if they manage to hold on to their players they'd be a top 6 side all the time you know, and if and the problem is that the, 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 they've moved to this new stadium. They're simply taking this to a new level, and then they've not fleshed out how they're going to do that. You know, we've not got the money. We know that we're not stupid. So, put out a sustainable plan which brings in youth scouting, etc. An honest plan, exactly. An honest plan which manages expectations, so people don't turn up getting annoyed that we just got walloped five 0 by Man City, just because that's where we are. That's our level. You know. We have got the opportunity as a club to, to, to challenge in the top six, but it's not going to happen overnight. And I just wish there was someone sensible in the marketing team or whatever that said, this is what we want to do and this is how we're going to do it. And I think people would accept that because West Ham fans, they you know they know where they stand in the, in the grand scheme of things. And I think they'd, they'd accept steady progress. I, I, do, I do think the West Ham fans are not stupid. I do think, if, look, if next season actually Slavin Bilic's come out and said, I'm going to play Cullen, I'm going to play Hoxwell, I'm going to play Burke, I'm going to play Keener, We've all said it in the past. I, I do believe that we would probably be willing to give him that time, and mm. we would be able to accept it. But do you think the board are willing to give him that time and accept it? Uh, no, I don't. And I, at the minute, I just there's there's a disparity between the board and Billich, and I don't believe that they're running at them on the same wavelength at the minute. I think the board are scared about their investment. They know yeah. that they've got a certain period of time which they've got to keep the club in the Premier League, after yeah. which they can sell it and make a profit. They don't have to give any of their profits yeah. away. And all they care about, from what I can see, is just maintaining the status quo in the Premier League. Doesn't matter where they finish, just maintain it until we get to the stage we can sell it. And it doesn't matter who's in the starting line. It doesn't matter exactly. if yeah. it's Burke or Oxford. And that's so frustrating yeah. as a fan because you just think, where are we going? Yeah. You know, and it, and, it, and it creates this uncertainty around the manager as well because yeah. he doesn't really know if his job's on the line, if he's safe. He can't express himself with the players he wants to because all he's thinking about is, am I going to get new contracts? Mm. You know, and that's no way to run a stable, sustainable vision for the club, in my opinion. You didn't vote the Tories, like Jared Tom? No, the state of that. Definitely didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was um, just, just that, you know, that I do believe that they need to be on that same wavelength. I think it might have been a completely different year if the board had come out and backed him last summer straight away from the off, giving him that transfer budget, maybe signed a different player. You know, it, everything could have been different, but... Like I said, going into next season, I, I still think it could be a rocky. It could be in for some rocky times next season because I just don't see them on that same wavelength. Is it important to buy the players Billets once, or is it important that we keep Billets sort of away from it enough, but he gets some sort of say in who we get? Because there seems to be a lot of confusion about who chooses the players yeah. because it's quite yeah. obvious when it's not a Billets player. Like Antonio has yeah. to wait his chance a lot, but it's quite obvious when it is a Billets player. Um, for this summer. We're still at the point of recording, we still haven't signed any strikers. So is it important that there's a a working solution between him, Henry and David Sullivan? Is that is that key essentially to Billich getting his contract next season? Yeah, of course it is. You know, he's got to obviously want the player. There'll be players scouted for him and he'll be he'll have his eye on certain players. And that has to be related to, to David Gold. But you know, Sullivan. David S Sullivan, sorry, um, you know, but that means that Sullivan can't go off and do his business. They have to be one with it because last summer it just seemed with the signings that were made. We but does this not make it harder for Tony Henry, who's in charge of of spotting talent? Does this not make it harder for Tony Henry? Because should Tony Henry go shopping for Billich when he doesn't know Billich is going to be here in a year's it, time? Because Tony Henry's investment could then go up in smoke in a year. I think this is it, and it, exactly what Tim said. There is no plan in place. Everything is all over the place. Nobody seems to be connecting. Fumbling about job. like a virgin, a woman. Yeah, exactly. Like it just there, there is nothing stable in place. There's no plan. There's there's nothing. Of the, the, we just don't get that confidence that 
that something is actually going to be done in the summer and that everybody's actually going to come out in September or you know when the, when the transfer window is closed and everything's going to be sunshine and rainbows and we're all happy with the decisions that are made. And like I said, whilst Billich is still here and the owners still act the way they're act, we're never going to see that you know that, that close knit you know transfer team. But you know I, I just I just don't see it. Last thoughts. Um, Have either of you persuaded yourself you should be given a deal yet? Because you're both only firing oh, no, cons. I, I, oh. Sorry, pros at me for giving both yeah, a deal. Yeah, this is the thing. I just, like you're both. I, I feel like you're both almost convincing yourselves. Oh, here. I, I think but we don't. No one really knows what's going on behind the scenes. Like we all, it's all guesswork, you know, and speculation. Is Bidic in charge? Is he not in charge of transfers? Who has the final say, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, Do you not think a contract would firm up at least one part of that? Unknowing, they say, "Well, this is going to be the manager." That's that sort of. I do, I, I do think that, but I just don't think it's in the nature of the owners to do that mm. because they're so fixed on maintaining, like I said, that status quo in, of keeping the, the club yeah. in the Premier League. Yeah. So they're just like, "I'm not going to give him a contract because if we go down, then I've got to pay him off, and so on and so forth." So I'm just going to keep my options open, and that is the nature of David Sullivan and David Gold's tenure, tenure of West Ham United, unfortunately. The, the, last, yeah, the last thing I say is it's just like, I, I, and I think we've, what you can gauge from this is everybody at the club loves Slav and Bilic, but there is just times this season when he has tactically looked appalling with his substitutions and, and, and just his formations, and it just... I don't know what it is, but it just hasn't filled me with that confidence that I had last season. And the thing is, I love him and I want it to work for him. I want it to be 110%. He doesn't have to worry about his job because, I, like Tim said earlier, he's a man motivated. He's just a likeable, lovely guy. And I would love to give him that deal. But there are really, there are some major flaws in his tactics this season that have to be sorted. And that, that's not just what we think. Everybody in the West Ham fan base has thought that. And I believe if we can sort that out, and we can get back to some sort of level that we found ourselves in 2015-16 with adding a few assets and everybody being on the same page. I see no reason why we cannot give them a new deal. Don't go anywhere yet. A couple of important things coming up for you, but Tim, are you sticking with your splinters in your bum? No, I want British to stay. So I'm <laughs> going to say, I think I think with the right and signings... you just persuaded yourself. I think with the right signings, it would do well enough by December to get a new deal. And if he does, I'll be happy. Keeping the splinters? <sighs> Do you know what? We haven't. I haven't spoke about Village or this whole situation probably since Burnley, since last game of the season. And talking through it, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on that. Like I'm moving off the fence <laughs> and actually talking through it. I love him and I, and I want him to get that new contract probably. So I, I would give him a new deal tomorrow because I want to see youth next season. I just can't see why how we can expect him to play youth until he's got security. And I think it's important that we'll have security. And it's important that Tony Henry knows that he's backing a manager who's here for the foreseeable future and he's going and buying players for today and not for three years' time for the new guy. I think it's important that them two are on the same level. But you guys now, I need a favour from you all. Head over to this guy's website. Them two are wearing the T-shirts from King Apparel. He owns our West Ham season ticket holder, so make sure you go check out, support your West Ham fan, have a look, decent clothes, and also get your phone out, record yourself, what's your thoughts on Slavin Bilic, would you give him a new deal? It's, it's splitting a lot of fans, I think, I think, a lot of, I think everyone wants to see him do well, it's just will you give him a new deal yet, or wait, is, is the one that's splitting people. Send it over to the email address that's below, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new, and if you've already subscribed, don't go anywhere, Tim, Tom, Geo. Hey, that's got to be three shortest names that's ever been on a video. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching.